Good morning friends, uh, I am really happy that this course is being offered primarily for my friends who are involved in maintenance. You all will understand that how important it is to keep an aircraft airworthy. You must be knowing me if you are attending performance and stability control course offered by NPTEL MOOCs. I am Professor Ghosh. Uh, I am heading aerospace department, IIT Kanpur. And I have a long association with flight laboratory, where we have got so many aircraft. Uh, we do experiments for teaching and research purpose. The basic question is, when my student or me sits in the aircraft, they need to feel assured that best has been done as far as maintenance is concerned, so that airplane is not only airworthy, it is safe and comfortable. So who is the task force? It is the maintenance team. My chief engineer, Mr. Bipul Mathur is taking primarily this course with an aim that when you go for license exams, you are well prepared on the seriousness of the maintenance protocols. Why I am here? I understand maintenance becomes a manual driven activity, although I do not agree completely, but it's a fun, it's highly enjoyable if you understand why you are doing, why you are following those instructions given the manual. There is a purpose to that and it has been evolved after serious considerations for a large time period, lot of testings. In doing that, there is a possibility that we forget or we do not pay attention on the basic question how does an aircraft fly? So to bridge that gap, I am taking module which will give some sort of an understanding for you, how does an aircraft fly? If you know how does an aircraft fly, then the next question comes, how do we ensure that I should be able to maintain that status of an airplane where it can fly safely? I can maintain a status where the passenger, the pilot feels comfortable and that is the biggest role of a maintenance engineer. So if I ask this question to myself, how does an aircraft fly, I will simply start thinking if I throw a stone like this, because of gravity, it has a natural tendency to come down. But when I am talking about an aircraft, I want it should go up and go certain distance and when I desire it should come down. So this is different from just throwing a stone. And if you see now here, if I want this stone to go up, once I have given a velocity v, if I want that it should not just come like this, that means the moment it tries to come down, I need to have a force upward. So if I draw it like this, this is the gravity, mg, gravity force. I need to generate a force F here, which should cancel this pull of the earth so that it can go straight. This is simple thinking. The question is, how can I generate this force? And that is what the concept of a fixed wing aircraft. And you all know who generates that force and that is wing. If you say wing, it will be something like this. This is aerofoil 
and if I draw it like this, this is typically a, cross, a wing where at each cross section you have an aerofoil, a typical shape which is primarily to accelerate the lift generation. What is lift? Let us see. If I take a plate like this and if I somehow move it with speed v, how can I move it with speed v? Let us say I put an engine, engine gives a thrust, so I can always go in the forward direction. If I do this like this then because of reaction offered by the resistance by air, it will have a normal force N, right. Now if I resolve this normal force, one in the opposite direction of V and one perpendicular to the V, then the component which is perpendicular to the V or the speed is called lift because it is lifting the body and this opposite which is trying to reduce the speed we call it drag, right? And lift and drag are two important things. The primary lift I get from the wing. Larger the area, more the lift. Larger the speed, more the lift. Better this contour, more the lift. So, if it is better this contour, that means once you fix a contour of an aerofoil, a maintenance engineer will always inspect that the contour is maintained or not. Over a time, is there any possibility that contour has been deformed? Then you lose the lift. If it is the area he is looking after, you will see because there, there is a large span, whether wherever the joints are there, the rigidity is there or not, over a period of time, whether there are some corrosion or some small failure has started occurring. So that is again maintenance man looks for it. Then you have seen there are surfaces called aileron which moves up and down like this. So maintenance man will look for whether as per the manual how much deflection it should have for a particular stick movement whether they are ha having or not or there are some misalignment. Right, because if there are some misalignment, then the pilot will have a different feel. Okay, so once we have a wing and we know that I need to generate a lift, we should balance weight. So if I, if I see like this, I somehow should generate lift, we should balance the weight and whatever drag it is experiencing, I should have enough thrust to counter it. Once I ensure thrust and drag are equal and lift and weight are equal, that means net force acting on this airplane is zero. So as per Newton's law, it will maintain whatever state it has. So it was moving with let us say 100 meter per second and if you somehow can manage lift equal to weight and thrust equal to drag, then it will keep on moving at 100 meter per second, right? This is the inertia, okay? But once I write like this, what happens? I, I get more information, the thrust will be equal to, I can use this equation, I can write thrust equal to weight by L by D, that is weight by lift to drag ratio. That is, if I am a designer, I am a designer of an airplane, I should always want thrust required should be minimum which means for a given weight L by D lift to drag ratio should be maximum. Simple. To keep lift to drag ratio maximum, I need to ensure that the contour of the wing is maintained and thoroughly checked that there are no deformations. Okay. Something which you know that it comes under your subject of rigging. Okay. okay. This is one you need to understand and second thing what is more important 
that when I am thinking of an airplane, how does it fly, one thing I have realized that if this is my fuselage, this is my wing, right? Let's say this is somewhere it is CG is here, center of gravity of the airplane, and this is your horizontal tail, this is your vertical tail, and let's say this is the aerodynamic center of the wing. Now, what will happen if I want to fly? I need to have some angle between the velocity vector and the wing, right? Which we call angle of attack. If I typically draw, if this is my aerofoil cross section of the wing, and if this airplane is going with speed, let us say climbing with a speed v, and let us say this is the horizontal, then the angle between the chord line, what is chord line? If uh, this is my aerofoil, this is the leading edge, this is the trailing edge, if I join them by straight line, this becomes the chord of the wing, chord, chord of the wing. So the angle between the chord line and the velocity vector is what we talk about alpha, the angle of attack. The angle between the velocity vector and the horizontal, we call it gamma, which is flight path angle. Okay. Now, you understand the lift on the wing depends upon this alpha angle of attack and the speed velocity. Who decides the speed for a given configuration? How much thrust you are generating? That means from a maintenance point of view, the thrust, who produces thrust? It is the engine. Right? So, for a particular V, I need a particular power or thrust, power or thrust from the engine. So, as a maintenance man, you need to ensure that your engine is in a perfect condition so that at when the pilot flies, he gets exactly that amount of thrust or power what is expected in the design or given by the manufacturer. It is possible, initially it is giving same and if you are not doing proper maintenance, sometime you find the thrust expected is not happening, and then there is a problem. So, who ensures that everything is what is being prescribed? It is a maintenance engineer. Once you understand the importance of a maintenance engineer for maintaining the engine in perfect condition, you also should realize the lift on the wing depends upon the angle of attack. What is angle of attack? It is the angle between chord line and the velocity vector. So, as a maintenance man, you need to check whatever way you have installed the wing, whether it is maintaining that position or not. Also, you physically check is there any deformation on the wing surfaces, right? Whether the chord line generally will not change because they are rigidly fixed, but you never know. So, there are drills you have to check and those things come under the topic of rigging, right? Now, the question is, let us say the lift force is acting somewhere here, right? So, drag is also acting opposite when it is moving. This is AC means aerodynamic center where I can represent the forces acting on the wing. Now, see if this is the lift and CG is ahead, so this will give a nose down tendency, it will try to pitch down the airplane. Now, if it tries to pitch down the airplane, that is not the way to fly, so it will never fly, it will always try to come like this. So, somehow you have to ensure that this nose down pitching moment is not there or even if it is there, it is nullified. Who can nullify this? You see, this is a horizontal tail, right? If this is seeing some angle alpha which is giving the lift, it will also see some alpha which gives you a lift upward like this, lift on tail. This also will give a nose down moment about CG. This, although they will give lot of lift upward, but same time it will try to take the aircraft down like this. So, you have to nullify that. How do you do that? 
if you see oriental tail, there is elevator. So you put the elevator up. The moment you put the elevator up, it generates a force downward. And this downward force will give a moment in the opposite direction. So this elevator deflection should be sufficient enough to generate a downward force which will marginalize or neutralize the nose down moment because of lift on the wing and lift on the tail for this configuration. So now you understand, it's just not wing, it is the elevator you have to check. From maintenance point of view, you have to check when the pilot is giving particular pull or push, whether that is correctly translated into deflection by translated into deflecting the elevator or not. Suppose in the design or during the early days when aircraft is flying high, you find for a particular force deflection is 2 degrees or 3 degrees. But over a period of your negligence, you find same force deflection is hardly 1 degree. So the pilot will be confused. He won't be able to fly. That is where the maintenance people put their best effort to see all the control deflections are okay or not. And if you recall, whenever you go for any, any flight, initially pilot will do checks. He'll move all the control surface and he knows, okay, how many degree is supposed to come like this, everything is fine. Then only he flies. So the pilot does that check. So then again I see the maintenance becomes important. In general, please understand, whenever something is moving, the moving parts, the maintenance becomes very critical. One has to be very, very cautious, right? For a fixed, the level of maintenance is, effort-wise is not that much generally, but rotary component, anything moving, means you have to be very, very careful, right? Since we are talking about elevator, You see, this is the tail, horizontal tail, and part of it, when it moves up and down, we call it, this is elevator moving up and down. How does it move? The pilot sits here somewhere. Pilot is sitting somewhere else. Some stick is there. He will be pulling it or pushing it. And there are, in a, a smaller aircraft, this pull or push motion get translated into deflection through a cable and a pulley system, right? So if it is a simple cable and pulley system, then the maintenance engineer has to check what is the status of the cable, whether there are overhang or not. Sometimes what happens once you put a cable, initially it, be, it may be taut, but with the time there may be a sag. So you have to ensure that there is no sagging. So again the maintenance engineer checks those things in a proper manner, which is dictated by the manual. Then there are higher end aircraft where there could be actuators, okay, which could be electric actuators, sometimes there could be electro-hydraulic actuators. So again, you have to ensure that the maintenance of electro-hydraulic actuators or actuators are proper so that Finally, you are able to get what you desired from the deflection point of view, right? Another important thing you understand that as I am flying, initially I have a landing gear, right? Okay? Here, somewhere, let's say. But if I fly like this in the air, this will offer a lot of drag, correct? lot of resistance. So what is the better way of doing is, as soon as you take off, you take them inside. Right? You may take them just inside, in belly. Right? So we call it retractable landing gear. That is, the landing gear was like this, now it comes back to the belly. And this motion is achieved by hydraulic, electrohydraulic, all those combinations. Imagine, if this system fails, I am going to land now, right? The landing gear, instead of coming full, it came half. How difficult it is to land. Or sometimes landing gear may not come out. 
then you have to do belly landing. So risky. Everything is fine, but if landing gear is misbehaving, you are in a very serious accident situation. So who ensures that the possibility of this is minimal? It is only maintenance engineer. They do thorough maintenance, they do thorough checkup, and then we feel very assured in the airplane. I know whenever I press a button or press a, uh, a stick, that surface or the landing gear will come out. So again, maintenance becomes very important. And for that, you need to know the principles of actuators, understand the systems, hydraulic systems, some part of avionics. And those little bit of understanding will be required so that you appreciate overall uh, maintenance philosophy, why you are doing all these things. This is another very important thing which you should also understand. That when a pilot is flying, one of the most important input he gets is airspeed. Right? He needs to know what speed he's flying. Right? Like your car, the aircraft is more critical. You have to know airspeed. How airspeed is measured? It is through Peter's tube. You all must be knowing Peter's tube. And simply, if you see the diagram is schematically, it is something like this. If I draw it something like this, just to make for understanding, I see I have put a gap here, small gap here. This is called static port. So from here, this part of this chamber will see P static. This, okay. But when the air goes from this, here I get P stagnation. Right? And you know, P stagnation or P naught is P static plus half rho V square. So I know V equal to 2 P naught minus P S by rho under root. So this understanding we convert in calibrating the air speed. Right? Now imagine, suppose you have a poor maintenance and some deformation has come here or some insect may be lying here. Right? So it will not give you correct speed at which you are flying. So let's say there is some obstruction and you are flying at actually 100 meter per second or 50 meter per second, it is showing you are flying at 30 meter per second. What pilot will do? Pilot will immediately try to increase angle so that he gets more lift. And in the process, it may lead us to a stall situation. So, so small item, which is too, so important from maintenance point of view, you have to be very, very thorough in seeing that the Peter's tube is clean and functional. Right? Very important aspects uh, if you are a maintenance engineer. Do not think it's a small thing, small hole, what is the problem? Whole problem is here and if there is a problem here, there is a serious problem in flight. So uh, what I thought of, as this course progresses, I will come intermittently and give a stress on few things which will have more understanding about the physics of the situation so that you can connect yourself to why you are doing all these things, right? And uh, for more details, those who are interested, they can always do my course on airplane performance, where in an exhaustive manner you will get uh, the understanding um, as, as well as uh, there is a course on stability and control. You can do that, but you will find me coming intermittently in this course, wherever I think some elements of physics has to be added, which strengthens your maintenance understanding. Thank you very much.